Okay, so we have a physical layout of an experiment. It looks like this. It's a reciprocal transplant. We have uh, every population given by the numbers here, one, two, three, four, in every block. And we have every uh, population found in every environment. And we have three randomly placed blocks within environments. Okay, so we need to go from this physical layout of the experiment to answering the question, what is the statistical layout of this experiment? In other words, what we want is a diagram that's going to show us the relationship among these variables, and that in turn is going to be used to set up the terms in our statistical model. <clears throat> okay, so I kind of very quickly set it there. We want to kind of ask ourselves, what combinations of variables do we have here and so the first uh, thing I would want to ask myself, thinking back to my conceptual experiment, is uh, my conceptual layout. Do I have every population in every environment? Well, I have obviously one, two, and three here being found not only in every environment, but in every block. So I'm going to start with the kind of outer skeleton of this experiment, just like in the conceptual layout. And we're going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to uh, put population over here, one, two, and three, that are from each of these environments. And then I have environment over here, one, two, and three. And I've already kind of said I have every population in every environment. So that means I can draw the statistical layout like this in terms of the relationship among these two variables. And the fact that these divisions, these different levels of each factor are found with every other level of environment it means that there's perpendicular crossing lines here. And that literally means that I can cross these two factors, okay? So, so if I have crossing lines that are perpendicular, that means they're independent factors. I'm varying them independently. And therefore I can actually, if as long as I have uh, n greater than 1 in each of the cells of the design, and clearly I do here. I have more than one population, one rep in environment 1, etc. Okay, so um, as long as I have replication n greater than 1, I can look at this as a two-way design, um, but I do have another factor here, which is what? Block, right? I have nine blocks here, and so I need to think about um, what the relationship is between block and population and block and environment. So let me ask myself the question, do I have every population in every block? The answer is yes, right? So I would expect that uh, just like how I answered, do I have every population in every environment? The answer was yes. I am going to, sorry about that, I'm going to somehow have um, the population line divisions crossing at a perpendicular the block divisions. Now I want to ask myself though before I draw that in the relationship between block and environment. Okay that's a key here. Do I have every block in every environment? I have blocks in every environment but do I have specific levels of block in every environment? In other words block one here is that in environment one, environment two, and environment three? No. So block is unique to a particular level of environment. All right? That means block has to be found within this, for example, block one. So if I'm going to draw block one in here, it has to be within this. And yet, block one also has all three populations, right? If I were to look peer into block one, it would have population one, two, and three. And so I need to draw the, a division of environment one into uh, block one. In fact, this is a little tricky to do. So this is block one here. Right, and it's found with all three populations, but only in environment one. And likewise, 
block 2. So if I want to draw in block 2, I've never written on the side like this, it's pretty interesting. And then <laughs> block 3 is here. And likewise, environment 2 is split into three blocks, blocks 4, 5, and 6, and environment 3 is split into three blocks, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so that's interesting that we have three blocks within environment one, three blocks within environment two, three blocks within environment three. They are all unique and every block contains every population. So you see how this diagram is the statistical layout because it tells us the relationship among population, environment, and block. And we are going to actually be able to look at the crosses between population and block. Because look, they cross at right angles, but we are not going to be able to look at the cross between block and environment, right? Because we don't have each block in each environment, and they don't cross. They're parallel. So the parallel lines indicate we can't cross them. All right, so that's the next step then. Um, we need to translate that into model effects that we're going to put into SAS Jump and, um, and analyze. Okay, so our model effects are going to be uh, environment, our population. Let's go ahead and put population at the top. I'll call that P. Uh, we're going to have environment call that E. And, well, what else do we have? We have block. And where does that fit in? Block is going to be unique to each environment. So thinking back a little bit to what we just learned about nesting, that indicates that block is nested within environment, right? We could write that B within E. Aha, uh -huh. so block is unique to each environment. That means block is nested within an environment. It's not crossed with it. But we said we can cross population. Well, I should just put a P here. P cross E is probably what we're interested in, right? The differential response of populations to the environment because this is a reciprocal transplant experiment. Sorry about that. Let me get my eraser here. There we go. Okay. So we have population cross environment, and we can do population cross block within environment, right? Because we have population divisions crossing block divisions at a right angle, but we cannot do environment cross block, right? Because we don't have every environment with every block, every block with every environment. We also cannot do the three-way interaction between block, population, and environment because that would require we have a cube, and we don't have a cube. We don't have every population, environment, and block combination because block is unique to environment. So this is our statistical model in this case. Now, once again, remembering the, um, the more than one way to skin a cat principle we didn't have to design this experiment this particular way. And in fact, we could have designed it many different ways. There's my cardinal. Um, many different ways we could have uh, designed this experiment, and they all would have resulted in different statistical models. Very importantly, uh, we need to do this process of planning our experiment before and getting all the way to our model effects before we actually do it, <laughs> because there are times when you can design an experiment where you'll have a term that is untestable. And in fact, um, we're going to do an example in class where the population by environment interaction it, with a very logical design is actually uh, untestable. So that's a little bit scary. The fact that you could design an experiment sounds logical and you would have a term that you're actually interested in that you could not test if you're not careful. So. Um, the 
More than one way to skin a cat principle is empowering in that um, it allows you to um, have some leeway in designing your experiment, but you will want to go through the process all the way from your conceptual to physical to statistical layout in order to make sure that you can construct your model effects. And then we are going to do um, something called expected mean squares later on. So expected, oops. To see if we can test all of our terms in our model. So we actually don't even know that yet, but at least we've been able to construct model effects and we see that our statistical design is going to have a population cross environment term, which again is probably what we're interested in here. So this is an example of also how the Blibble principle does not always apply. Remember the bottom line is the bottom line principle, um, where usually when you design an experiment, the bottom line should be what you're interested in because if it's statistically significant, then all the other interpretations get a little hairier above that. But in the case of this, we're not really interested in block per se. We're using that to take account of spatial variation so we don't pseudo replicate within these environments. Um, and we're really interested in the population by environment interaction. So remember one exception to the Blibble principle is where we have blocking. And that's exactly what we have in this situation. So. The population by block interaction, generally we won't be interested in that per se. We don't care if populations respond differently to microsites within environments. We're generally interested in the big response of populations to environments. Now, okay, so this is an ecological example, but there are many, many examples in any field where you'll have this kind of a statistical layout that's a little bit more complex. So don't think it just applies to an ecology experiment. There lots and lots of experiments like this. We'll go through some examples. Okey doke.